Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. I'm Audra Kane. We all know what it's like to be the new kid on the block. New places, new people, and things that we continually learn when we are in a new town. So here to talk about herself and her experience in this new town is Renita Lampkin. Thanks again for being on the show, Renita. Thank you. So you, not only are you new to town, but you're also a new pastor here in town. Mm -hmm. First, tell me about where you came from. Where did you move to Cape Girardeau from? Well, I lived in the St. Louis County area and I served a church in St. Charles. Okay, and so is that where you're from originally? St. From Louis? Kansas City area, grew okay. up in Kansas City, Kansas. So you're a Missouri girl, so, oh, yeah. so Cape Girardeau is not ridiculously foreign to you. It's not no. like you came from a foreign country, no. but how has it been different than your experiences in Kansas City or in the St. Louis area? Well, um, I appreciate that there's one government in St. Louis County, government can be spread. There's 91 municipalities, different governments, different people to deal with. Um, so it's nice having everything consolidated. Um, it is great being able to get across town, even when you're running late in 15 minutes. <laughs> stuck in traffic, I'll be there in five. <laughs> you know? so, Absolutely. <laughs> so, so the, you know, it's good differences. Yeah, good differences. That, that is definitely a positive. Yeah, we we yeah. laughed when we moved here. We moved here about seven years ago. We laughed and said, well, things move a little slower here. Yeah. But yeah. that's not necessarily little, a bad thing. No, it isn't. I mean, it's, it's really good to settle. You know, to have a sense of um, spirit settling, mind settling. Speaking of spirit settling, yeah. so you're a pastor for St. James AME Church. And for anyone who doesn't know, AME mm -hmm. is African Methodist, Methodist Episcopal. Right. Um, and that's something that came together many, many years ago. That's not something that's 200. New. Yeah. 200. So, but St. James has been around. There's a long history of St. James, and it's on. Nor it's on North Street, North right? Street, correct. Just, uh, just off of Sprig. Correct. So the history of the church, it's been around a long time. 153 years we'll celebrate this year. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. So how do you feel about the church thus far? Because being new to the city, but you're also new mm -hmm. to the church, how have things been going? Um, normal transition. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very vital church, and uh, the congregation is eager to continue with the mission and ministry of the AME Church. So the um, mission of the AME Church is to minister to the spiritual, intellectual, physical, environmental, and emotional needs of all people. And we have a very rich history of being active in the community, of um, being present, of being a part of development. And the church, people in the church are very excited about reclaiming our identity and emerging in the community as a leader, we always were. So with it being a downtown church, uh, how how do you feel about the needs of the neighborhood directly re like adjacent to the yeah. church itself? So I, I'm still discerning um, needs. I've been spending some time out walking in the neighborhood at different times during the day, and seeing the flow of traffic, who's out, who's home, just what's what. Um, a lot of emphasis and focus is on the south side, which does need a lot of emphasis and focus. Um, but there are people hurting and uh, community uh, hurting around us and um, there are needs. And so we're discerning, we got a little GRACES grant. We got a GRACES grant from the United Way and we've been offering a um, children's program. And we- Is that an after school program? Well, right now we're just on Sunday afternoons. Our goal okay. is to provide out of school time um, some supervised care. The children don't necessarily come to church, but they are playing out in the street, um, in front of the church and down the street and at the park. So with us being right there, it's a great opportunity to um, be a safe space. So we're serving lunch after church and they have puppeting and we're doing reading enrichment, math enrichment, arts and crafts, going to the park with supervision. And uh, so it's, it's been pretty great. We are in our third week of eight, so. Oh, well, that's exciting. Yeah. So was that something that you had done before? Yeah, so church? youth development is my, was my first career as an early childhood major. Taught preschool, had home daycare. Just as my children aged out of camp, I did summer camps. And um, then my children became the summer camp staff and now are doing amazing work in nonprofit and Etc. for themselves, and um, so it's kind of something I can do in my sleep almost. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so when uh, you when you got here, I know you have hit the ground running I trying have. to bring some mm -hmm. new programs. Do you have some programs in the works that you want to see come to fruition for the area? Well, very much I'm listening to what people say, and I think that's one of the um, downfalls of new ministries or ministers or people who want to do ministry in community. Often we have great ideas, but the ideas aren't necessarily what the community needs. So I'm listening to what people say they need and then looking for resources to develop what they say they need. I think people are the experts on their own lives and can best decide um, what's needed for um, their own um, thriving. So some of what I have heard, um, there's some issues with uh, parents and dealing with the school district and school system. So we've started a parent advocacy council and um, so that has launched. We've had two meetings, have no idea where it's going, um, but we're excited about the journey. Uh, I have joined forces with SNAP, uh, the Stop Needless Acts of Violence Prevention Group. Mm -hmm. um, we have a prayer meeting tonight. We're just coming out of the building and going onto the streets, and we'll be praying regularly in the streets. And um, don't so know where that's taking us, but we're going. So now that they're, they've seen your face yeah. here on Cape yeah. Chronicle, they know what you look like, and so when they see you, I know that people are gonna grab you and say, I need your help with something, so be prepared. Well, I'm always at the ready. Well, I don't always excited. have the answers, but the answers are there and together we can find the answers to every problem has a solution. Absolutely. Well, Renita Lampkin, thanks so much for coming yeah, in. My it's pleasure. been so great chatting with you. I look forward to seeing you do big things in Cape Girardeau. Thanks. Renita Lampkin from St. James AME Church sharing information about herself. After the break, we'll hear from Missouri Department of Conservation Angler Education Assistant Kamaria Pearson about a new program they have begun that's next on Cape Chronicle. Founded in 1877, the American Humane Association has been dedicated to the idea that all animals, including those raised on our farms and ranches, are entitled to humane treatment. Today, animals on nearly 8,000 farms enjoy a better quality of life because of the ethical, science-based standards established by the American Humane Association. Live better. Be humane. Choose American Humane Certified Products. At Southeast Missouri State University, you're here for more than a degree. You're here to do whatever it takes. We don't just learn from textbooks. We learn from each other. That's why we tackle our challenges, fuel innovation, and never settle. We're giving you the tools to learn, to lead, to grow, to do. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org.